What's up, golf addicts? Welcome to Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings. We are the Tour Junkies. I'm DB. We got Pat Perry. We got some late night Tour Junkies After Dark juice. I got a unnamed a vodka. Rip. No free, no free ads here. I Pat got a little rose has switched mm-hmm. from the vodka to the rose. We just got done recording the podcast. For the 2020 Northern Trust from TPC Boston. That was hard to say, TPC. Is that right, TPC? Yeah, TPC Boston. he did that right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, first event of the FedEx Cup playoffs. It's a big tournament. Big field, big names. A lot of fun. Let's go. You know, it's going to be, uh, it, it's gonna be uh, some cream. Rising. Cream rising to the top. To the top. Are you okay? Are you okay, TP? I'm a little hey, tipsy. Are you are, are like are you really this is like true DB DK after yeah. dark right now? Like yeah, I'm a li- normally more tipsy I'm, than me. Yeah, normally I'm held I'm I'm held holding it together, but I am not right now. Um <laughs> hey, go ahead and give this a thumbs up because we need a thumbs up. Somebody yeah. we need a thumbs up. And subscribe to the we, channel we while deserve, you're at it. we deserve a thumbs up we deserve yeah that thumb being up so click it yeah wherever it is on the thing yeah hey pat um can you tell the people about tpc boston and the kind of golf course it is before we get into a couple of picks that we disagree yeah, with so, and the so sports a couple- book stuff a couple things to remember this week is that uh, so they've changed that kind of the order of this tournament. So, um, so the Northern Trust is not the same course in the past that we were playing this week at TPC Boston. So um, yeah. they took that out last year in 2019. They took out TPC Boston. It was like the Dell Technologies and the Deutsche Bank, but it's still part of the playoffs. They took it out. So anyway – you got to go to 2018 and prior to that. I wish I could go to 2018 because 2020 sucks. Yeah, I, w- I would like can to. Can we say that so, on TJ after, on draft? Will DraftKings let us say I that? I think we can say anything we want. Okay. I yeah. wish I could be Any, at 2018. I, anyway. 2018 was, the, was the, the cat's pajamas. It was a good year. An even year, too, which I like even years. That's so OCD and stupid. Um, oh, but man. anyway, so <laughs> this was the Deutsche Bank and the Dell Technologies, and then they took it out for the for last year. But anyway, we, we do have good course history here, but you got to go back from 2018 and beyond. But this is a, a par 71 at TPC Boston. It's playing just over 7,300 yards. Uh, as you mentioned, this is the first playoff event for the year, we have 125 players. They're still going to cut it down to top 65 in ties. And then the top 70 will advance to next week. It is an Arnold, Arnold Palmer design with a oh, Gil Hance, something like that. Arnold Palmer, Arnie, Arnie Palmer design with a Gil Arnie Hance Palmies, thing. Arnie Palmies. Uh, Go make me an Arnie Hance. Palmy. Bent grass greens, they should run about 11 to 12 on the scent meter. You got uh, the rough is Kentucky bluegrass with some, you know, just some fescue and shit in there. Um, anyway, you should see a lot of scoring this week. The par fives are, are pretty easy. I mean, two of the par fives are less than 550 yards, so they're going to score on these things. This course has yielded some of the most eagles on any course on tour all year so this is a this is a, a course that they could definitely score on if the conditions are right which i think they'll have this week fairways are relatively easy to hit it is a bombers course so don't be mistaken that is what it is and that's what we're going to be looking at this week as far as the stats are concerned i do like form i do like course history all that kind of stuff but i'm looking at off the tee and approach and i like par five scoring but again the the bombers are where it's at you look at past champions at tpc boston going back 2018 it was bryson 2017 jt rory in 2016 his second title ricky fowler in 2015 and then chris kirk in 2014 so there you go that's a quick rundown in tpc boston
you said it was a bomber's course and you still want to play Webb Simpson. Oh, uh, see, so I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. I would like so you're to gonna start it off right now. I'm gonna start off right now. I'm done with your course breakdown. I'm finished. With I don't it. care about Webb. Webb is pock, so different. You can go pock the course breakdown in the Webb does the, not matter when it comes to bombers, whatever else. The guy's just playing. He's out of this world right, right now. He was third I last world, week. I, he's out of this world right now. Out of this world right now. <laughs> T12 at the WGC. Uh, 37th at the PGA Championship. I mean, ever since he started back at – 37th know, once, at the PGA Championship, a big boy golf course that required more accuracy than this one does. And he only finished 37th. It doesn't 37th. matter. It doesn't now, matter. Now, if he finishes 37th this week, are you going to be happy with that? No. You're not. No, I don't you're not going to be like that. completely pissed about it, but you're not going to be happy about it. Let's By talk the about way, Webb. Let's talk about Webb since the start. He missed the cut at the Charles Schwab. He won the Heritage. Eighth at the Rocket Mortgage. Perfect course for him. Perfect. Course. Missed the cut at the Memorial. Twelfth at the WGC, which is not a is not a short course by Jeez any cut. means. Actually. Yep. 37th at the PGA, and then third Damn. last week at the Wyndham. So perfect I just think that. Him. Webb is a great play this week. I love He's him in cash. I like him in tournaments. I will play him all across That's, the board. And you will – you will. And he's got his will. caddy, by the way. He didn't even have his caddy in the PGA Championship. He's got him this week. So, I mean, why would you not play him? And his ownership's going to be way down than where it was at the Wyndham at 37%. Well, yeah, he, he no named his kid there. after the Wyndham. So, yes, his ownership will be down. But you will still lose if you play Webb. You can talk about his his form, which is which is okay. I mean, a win and a T three at the Wyndham, a win at the Heritage, which is a I mean that place they might as well name it the Simpson. Like it's perfectly built for him. The Wyndham is perfectly built for him. Two completely different golf courses than what we face this week at TPC Boston, where he has finished over the last four years. Get ready for it. 49th, 75th, missed cut, and 44th. So his best finish whoa, here. Whoa, 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 whoa. A 44th. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't stop there. What happened before the 44th? Where was he there? That was more than five years ago. I don't care. He was T9th. Top 10. Congratulations. So he and beat this like all, Chad you're, Campbell you're, and Scott you're, Verplank to finish. You're tonight. going. You're going in the range of when he was like going through all his putting troubles and he couldn't putt with a long putter and all that kind of stuff. Like you're, that was like you're, seventeen. Like it's 18. all skewed. No, it's all skewed. It's all skewed. It's not skewed. It's not. No, it's not. The mm-hmm. length is an issue. The course history is an issue. It, it, I don't it, think link. I, I like. I like long players this week, but I'm not like totally throwing out everybody that is is a shorter hitter. I am. Especially a guy in good form like Webb Simpson. He's he's in good form when he gets to a golf course that suits him. When he gets How to is Webb Simpson not in good form? He wouldn't have been 38% owned last week if he wasn't in good form. No, he's in 38% owned last week because it's the freaking Wyndham. He's got a like a girl in middle school and literally just, named Wyndham. I just mentioned his form going into that event. It's incredible. This, this since it's the not start, incredible. Yes, it is. It's good. It's a win at the Heritage. Again, built for him. Webb is a very course-centric player. He, it is about the golf course for Webb. Let's move on. Let's move on. Hey, hey, here's where I would have trouble with you. This is what is you're going up. You're, you're going up and taking – you're going way up to JT at the top at 11-3, a guy who's just been hit or miss all the that's time. The, that's the best you got? That's the best and you, you got. You got to pay. You got to. You want to come gotta, at me about Justin Thomas? Yes, I'm coming at you on Justin Who's Thomas. Who's the number one player in the world like a week ago? I don't care. You want to play up? You want to pay up for him when you got yeah. all these other good options down here, and then you can create a better lineup if you just don't play the highest guy this week. Yeah, I'm. I'm coming at you. Well, <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't care what his ownership is. If it's high or low, I don't really care. In the in the top he tier, he sucked at the PGA, by the way. He did suck at the PGA, and I had a lot of him. Uh, he did, but he won the St. Jude. He finished a runner-up at the Workday, 18th at Memorial. Tough golf course. Justin Thomas is a big-time player, um, and he's long. He's the best iron player on the PGA Tour right now. 
that is hard to argue. Um, and, and this course is about length and strokes gained approach. That's what it's about. Year in and year out, when you look at the stats, when you look at how people, how people conquer this golf course. I would throw putting distance. on bent grass greens in there. Yeah, I mean, but, but, but again, it's, that's a little less predictive. And he's not a bad putter on bent grass. He's, he's not, he gained strokes putting on bent grass over the long-term average. You can look at the long-term average. I, I, I don't mind JT. It's, it's a short field. It's a 125-man 125, 125 field where top 65 in ties make the cut. You're going to have a larger percentage get through with six of six this week. Therefore, you can be a little riskier. You can, have a, you can be a risky biscuit, play some guys in the, in the low sevens, 6K range. You're you're like you're more likely to get them through the cut than you are on a on a field where it's 155 players. So I like JT. I like going up top. And I mean, I, can't, I don't know what else to say. He's like this. He, he is the best player in the world right now. I don't, he he should be ranked number one. He's the best player in the world. I don't right think now. he's the best player in the world right now. I Who do you think's the best player in the world right now? Colin Morikawa. That's. Are you freaking kidding me? That's. that's I think he's the best player in the world. I do. I do. I think he's the best player in the can we, world can, right now. Can we put recency bias in big red letters over the, t- over the top of the screen? I don't like care. Big red you letter. can't. You can't. Big, big, fat red letter. Just, no, just put him over Pat's face, not over me. Don't, don't put that on me. Just put him over Pat's face. That's fine. You can say what you want. I think he's the best player in the world. How are you going to play one more? I got one more for you. We're going to stay up top. This seems, this seems to be week in and week out where we debate. Patrick Cantlay at ninety two hundred dollars. Now listen, I, uh-huh. I have been, I have been trying. I've been trying to get Patrick Cantlay to to act like like to remember that he's Patrick Cantlay since the restart, which he's not done a fantastic job of. Okay, um, he's had a couple decent finishes. Yes, eleventh uh, at the Traveler, seventh at the Workday. Came out well. Came out hot. Then underperforming, underwhelming. Now, he is a cut maker. Yes, Patrick Cantlay is a cut maker. Is he going to miss a cut? Probably not. But is he going to return the value that you need him to return at 9,200? Um, I don't know, man. I wish, I wish I knew which version of Patrick Cantlay we were going to get. But I, I, I'm over him right now until I see a little something different out of him. Now, Well, homie, you're never going to know exactly what any player is going to do. Uh, David, oh, because I, this is yeah, called golf. I know this is called golf. Yeah, no, and, and no, I things... know Webb Simpson is going to finish outside the top twenty. Is what that's okay. Be. Well, I would be willing to bet you against that. But anyway, um, outside of that, we're talking about Patrick Cantlay right now. I think he's going to have lower ownership this week on DraftKings, which is what you want when you're playing in a, especially a week like this, where you're going to have more I've heard guys. That you that do make, want that? Yes, I have heard. Make that. the cut. Cantlay is. I mean, he's. 24th in the field in strokes can approach. He's 26 off the tee, 22nd in birdie or better percentage. He is first in par five scoring, which is something I do like this week. I think Cantlay, for a guy that is, is you know, checking all the boxes, I don't care about what you're, you're, you're looking at coming into this event. I think that he is a great play from a DFS standpoint. So I will play a ton of them. I'm, I'm a big fan. And I don't know, to be honest, why you wouldn't play him. I mean, you sound just like the two times he's played this course, by the way, he was 24th last year or in 2018, T13 in 2017. I, I just, I'm a big fan of Cantlay. And and I'm not going to just like me at the PGA with Cantlay. And you're, you're going to be hard. You're going to look at me on Sunday and go, David, why did you let me play Cantlay? I'm burned by him right now. Okay. All right. Well, you you're can put recency bias over. Maybe me let's right now. go on into the bets. Okay. You're Talk. Tell me about your sports book bets. You now we've talked about this tournament tends to this golf course tends to yield the cream. You know, uh, this is a creamy tournament. So, uh, you know, Bryson won in 2018, I believe, at 100 to one. But before that, it's like short numbers. A lot of short numbers, but. That's what Pat's here for. Pat's a short number guy. You know, I am not here for that. You can go to a lot of places and get your short numbers. You're going to come to me to get your long numbers. And I'm going to be the one that fills you in with your quarter unit and your half units throwing out at these big numbers. And one of these days, you're going to thank me for that. So we'll get to that in a minute. But Pat, 
You give me your short numbers right now. Okay, so for the shorter numbers, I will go with a few guys here. I like Dustin Johnson at 22 to 1. A guy's long hitter. He's got a good course history here. I think that's a good number for him. You would see that probably much shorter if it wasn't for the 80s, <laughs> the rounds in the 80s that he shot unexpected. I mean, like, I don't know what. Unexplicably, explicably, <laughs> unexplicably. Damn, I can't even say that. <laughs> this is the definition of DK after dark. Uh, anyway, so DJ oh, at twenty-two shit. to one. I shouldn't bring in extra words to this show. Um, this Colin is, Morikawa. This is not the show to try to flex any kind of yeah, uh, Colin, any kind of vocabulary. Colin Morikawa at twenty-five to one. I still damn. I can't believe you can say Morikawa. That's pretty good. I still think. I mean, twenty-five to one. The guy top five in the world just won the PGA Championship. Okay, that's. that's I mean, a you good think he number. should be number one in the world? So that's a pretty damn good. I number. do think he should be number one in the world. Actually, to be honest, Jason Day at twenty-six to one. I like that number a ton. Patrick Cantlay, who we've talked too much about at 35 to 1. I like him. And then Victor Hovland at 55 to 1, I think is a good number as well. I have some longer shot bets. You may want them. You may not. I don't care, but I'll go ahead and give them to you. Alex Noren at 100 to 1. Ben On at 110 to 1, I think is a good number on him. Our boy Joel Damon. 175 to 1. I think that's a good number. And then Ryan Palmer, 175 to 1. He's going to frustrate you, but he could just win. You never know. So there you go. DB, that's all I got. I'm not even going to give you top 10s, top 20s. I'm going to let you do all of that kind of stuff. You go with your outrights and then any top 10s and top 20s. All right. Well, the only short number that really got me in my special spot was Jason Day at 26 to 1, who you mentioned, playing so good. Long player, great record here. That's easy. Then I'm going to jump to 55 to 1, except I'm not going with your rookie, Victor Hovland. I'm going to go with my rookie, Scotty Scheffler, who could have won the PGA Championship, looked stone cold on Sunday at the PGA, ready to, ready to pull it out, not afraid of a big event, big field. 55-1, to 1, the long-hitting Scotty Scheffler. Matt Wolf at 70-1, to 1, who I know from the podcast, you and I both really like Matt Wolf this week. <clears throat> Tough to ignore. Great form. One of the longest players on tour, probably top three longest hitters on tour, playing well. 70-1 to 1 on DK Sportsbook right now. That is a very scrumptious number. Uh, a guy who could have won this past Sunday had the Jim Herman guy. The, the looks like a. I said he looked like a gastroenterologist. He looks like a gastroenterologist. He just does. Uh, anyway, Siwoo Kim could have won. Could have beat Dr. Herman. He is a hundred to one. Uh, he's also eighty second in the FedEx Cup. He's got to get to seventy or better to advance the next week a lot of motivation he's a long hitter very aggressive but wider fairways here I think could help Siwoo and then I'm going to go Cam Champ at 100 to 1 long hitter probably the longest hitter on the PGA Tour uh, could have also won on Sunday at the PGA and faded on the back nine and then finally the wily veteran Phil Mickelson at 140 to 1 wow. we all know Phil hits bombs okay but he's got tremendous experience here. Pretty good record at TPC Boston over the long term. He's won here before, I believe. And, you know, aggressive player, flashing a little bit of form. I like it. He's also 67th in the FedEx Cup points, so he's just inside the top 70. He needs to have a solid week to continue. Uh, I'm sure he does not want to be a one-and-done playoff member this year in 2020. So I think Phil at 140-1, to one, that's a big – it's a big number. I've seen him at another sports book at 100 to 1. So if you want to take a really long shot, an experienced player who hits it a long way, who knows this golf course, putts great on bent grass, duh, has won the Masters a couple times, uh, Phil Mickelson would be that guy. So there you go. Uh, I got a couple top 20 bets. Max Homa, 8 to 1. Don't Max is that. a long hitter. Like it. Yeah, long hitter, good iron player has flashed some form here recently, did not play well at the PGA, um, but, but played well before that, can compete in these big events. He's won at Quail Hollow, which is a big event, very tough. 
Um, and then two guys, both at six and a half to one, Joel Damon and Taylor Gooch. You talked about Joel. I think you bet him outright at 175 to one. I don't know that he, I don't know that this is his event to win. He's not, I don't, so I don't want to bet him to win, but top 20, he's six and a half to one. Top 10, he's 14 to one. I think that's very doable for Joel. He's been playing so well right now. He doesn't get himself into a lot of trouble. Uh, Tita Green playing really well. Taylor Gooch, a little bit longer than Joel, a little more aggressive. Um, Tim's, tends to be a boomer bust player. He's at six and a half to one uh, for a top 20 as well. So there you go. Uh, that's the betting card for the, the Northern Trust from TPC Boston. I'm glad you got that out of your mouth because I felt like you were struggling there for a second. Um, I don't have anything Pat, else. Yeah. Why don't you take us out? For, why don't you? Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, that's all we got. I appreciate everyone listening here for the DraftKings After Dark, TJ After Dark. You know what? If you want, make sure you like and subscribe and thumbs up and do all those kind of things that we like that you do to make us uh, better for some reason. I don't know why. So guess what? That's all I got. I'm out. See ya. Out! <laughs>